about to come. And the Bible said that he could not see it. Amen. He told him to go back and search for the cloud. And he went back seven times. And on that seventh time, amen, he said, all I see, amen, is a cloud like the size of a man head. Elijah knew, amen, that the heaven was about to rain. He said, get ready because it's about to rain. Amen. And that's what worshipers do. They change. And it reads uh, like this. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, somebody shout change. There is made a necessity of change. Somebody say it's necessary to change. Also of the law, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evidence that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. And it is yet far more evidence for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Somebody say another priest. Another priest. Who is made not after the law of carnal commandments, but after the power of an endless life. An endless life from our theme. Amen. I think it said men and women transforming mm -hmm. under a new order. Yeah. Amen. From that I pulled and I thought about a change for the better. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. A change for the better. Yeah. I don't know what it is, amen, that, and it disrupts all of us. Something yeah. about yeah. when you say change or when something changed, yeah. it put people on the edge. That's right. Because we don't know what it is that we are to expect. Amen. But when you hear the word change, yes. we have to understand that that means things are going to be different. Amen. Because that's what the word is defined. When they say change, I mean, we're going to do something different. different right? And it's amazing how you can change little things. Yes. Little things can throw you off. Yes. If we come in here one day and one morning and the pastor says, I don't want the mother to sit over there, I want the mother to sit over that's there. Right. I don't want the people to sit right there, I want them to sit right there. And we're just going to clear out all of this. We're not going to have the minister to sit here on the platform. We're going to put them back there. The church will go into disarray. Yeah. 
It's our nature that we can bother us, yeah. amen, and disturb us out of what makes us comfortable, yeah. oh. amen, then you almost got a fight on your hands. Yeah. It invades all churches, yeah. all business, uh -huh. people of all culture. Uh -huh. It seizes every generation by the throat and attempts to stop all progress of someone moving forward. Because, see, that's why change comes. Oh, yeah. It does not come to take away from you. It is coming to actually make you a better. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It comes to get the best out of your life. Yeah. Yeah. It comes to produce. But, see, in the producing, there comes something else with producing. It's pain. It's always not pleasure. It's not pleasure to the flesh anyway. It does not satisfy that man. But what it does satisfy is the man on the inside. Because that's what's going to count. So that's what changes does. It, it puts people in bother. It bothers them. It stops all progress. We can't move forward when we start resisting the change. Even when we know that change is better for us. Even when we know what we're about to do is the truth. Now we know that it is not, we're not getting nowhere in what we're doing, but because we're stuck in what we're doing and we don't know how to get out, then God sends a change to pull us out. It's just like a car. When you're stuck in a place, amen, then you call a tow man who has the, the equipment there to pull it out. So when God sends some trouble or trial our way, amen, he's trying to pull us out of one place to get us to go in another direction. In a direction that is better for us. So even knowing what is the truth, we still don't want to change. And we know that if we don't change, we're going to lose out. We know if we don't change, amen, it may be the end of the road for us. Amen. When we resist the change that come to move us into a better direction. When we refuse it. When we resist it. Amen. It puts us in a bad situation. It leaves us stuck in the mud. And we can't move forward. So change is necessary. Yeah. But you have to embrace yourself or embrace the change. Yeah. Amen. And it is yeah. not always easy. Oh, you man. have to just go ahead and take the thing by the horn and yeah. let it pull you yeah. to where it's trying to take you. Yeah. I like the way Machiavelli saw it. He yeah. saw it like yeah. this. He said, there is nothing more difficult to take in the hand or more perilous to conduct uh -huh. or more uncertain in its success than to take the lead in introducing a new order to a thing. Yeah. When you bring forth a new order to a congregation of people, all right, all right. Come on, come you on. may get success out of it, or you may not That's get right. success That's out right. of it. That's right. But how been ever, do not fail to introduce them to the change of the thing, because sooner or later, they're gonna be somewhere else down the road. Yeah. There is a challenge well, to the person who's trying to introduce or trying to open up the mindset of the people and then about what's about ready to take place in the place, in the order, in the life of the individual. So he says there's a challenge. But don't worry about it. Go ahead and do what you do. Because when you're inspired to introduce something to somebody, everybody's not going to gravitate to all that much. It's just not going to happen overnight. But then you do what you do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The ultimate test yeah. Come on, of leading others right. into change, uh -huh. the ultimate test yeah. Come on, now. of getting people to change, uh -huh. yeah. who do you think it starts with? All right. Right. All right. What yeah. end does it start with? All right. It starts yeah. at the back? No. Well, does it start from the side? Uh -huh. oh, yeah. When does change start? Mm -hmm. It starts from the head. You are the first person that must change. If we're trying to get others to change, and we have not changed, ain't nobody going to change. You have to be the first one to change. Or whether you, how you approach the situation or whatever it is, it starts with you. That's what the test is. But the worst thing or the biggest thing, the 
challenge that I have had to face in changing in my relationship with my husband. Because you know, we try to fix him, but he and he ain't got it right. <laughs> All right. You know, you know how we feel about the husband. You know, it's just his light bulb don't come on quick. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. Because your, your behavior now got to change. Yeah. The higher you go, you're going to have to examine some stuff as you go up. And we got to lay down some stuff as we're climbing. The Bible said we got to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily be set. Because the higher you go, Yeah, we need a new 
get it. We, we definitely got to have one of those. Uh, I can't have them hitting me in the head. The <laughs> temperature's falling down. Right. Right. Still All wants right. to hang on to something. Exactly. We got to still hang on to something. All right. So he said, well, we'll, we'll build it. All right. We'll build a new building. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what, we're going to build it on the same old site. <laughs> And then we're going to take some of the old material to build a new building. We're going to take the old into the new. Jesus said, you can't put new wine in old skin. Come on, man. You can't put new into something old. It can't handle it. It's been used. So he said, we take the old stuff and build a new building. And then we're going to worship in the old church to the new one is built. I, I that's the way we do when we try to hold on or oh, resist change. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're still trying to hold to what is not doing us any good. Yeah, yeah. And God is saying, let it go. Right. I got you. Right. If you will trust me, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Because what I have is better than what you're trying to hold.
I said, I guess I can just turn off the light and put the sack on and do it. <laughs> Yeah. That's still 
can grow. Yeah. That's what the church needs. It has to grow. Yeah. She is starving for growth. We yeah. keep her on the back light. You got to move plants around, and I'm not good with plants. Yeah. I don't have a green thumb. I may put water in you, but give me some, and I don't have to water every day. All right. <laughs>
to make us change. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 He will send situations yes. that will make you get up yes. and you will have to change. Yes. He has sent sickness, he has sent whatever. He has, he will allow it. I would say he will allow it. He will send, but he will allow it. Yes. He will do it. He did to Job. Now he's yes. going to step back. Well. I'm going to take away this thing, but don't you touch That's me. Right. Do what you do. And not allow the enemy to do what we do. Yeah. So that he can get us to where he's trying to get us. Amen. 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 It is necessary that we must change. Yeah. And to look at it like this. God has promised. And if you change, yeah. you will bless you. Yeah. Had not Abraham yeah. took upon himself and left his kindred That's right. and went to a place that he uh -huh. didn't know nothing about. Yeah. 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 was yeah. enemies yeah. out there that would kill him on, on a drop of a dime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he got up, and the Bible said he obeyed God. Yeah. And because he obeyed God, oh, God yeah. gave him a promise. Yeah. A covenant yeah. to this yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. That I will not only bless your seed, but I'm going to bless every yeah. nation oh, that follow yeah. after you, yeah. that fall for me, that come to me. And this thing yeah. is great. It's yeah. big. Yeah. If we would get up and right. move. Yeah. But Abraham had to move. You got to feed what's familiar. You got to leave what's comfortable sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to say, kids, mom and daddy, come by and say, I love you, but I got to do what I got to do. Right. Because if we don't, we're going to stop. Right. Abraham knew that if he did not leave, amen, it's just, it ain't working no more. A man who said they got to be more than God than this, he can't just be the, the God of the moon, the God of the sun, and that's too many gods that we got to remember to call on. He said they got to be somebody who's great.
pakai bear. Come on, there's a lot of people out there. Trust me, they are. But there's a promise, and there's a blessing if you change. The Levitical priest who picked it up, and the writer came to him in the text, and the text was trying to get the Hebrews to see if you go back and start doing it the old way, then you're going to miss out on a whole generation. So he said, now if perfection, if what we have is good, and what we got is good, it's good, it's good, let me tell you, it's good. But I found out that if the enemy of better is good, come on now. When you can do better and you're stuck on good, do better. So what he was trying to get them to see that Christ is better than what what we used to have. What we used to have kept us. It preserved us for a moment in time. It brought us to where we need to be. He said the law, nothing is wrong with the law. It's good. But let me show you something that is working for us much better. He's working for us much better. But you gotta leave. You gotta let it go. You got to, you got to just put it off. Get it out your mind. And it break the change that God is trying to bring forth in your life. So they want to hold to the law. But he said the law couldn't make you perfect. Go ahead. The law. The law said you just a liar. It revealed that you were a liar. Whatever your dilemma, whatever your infirmity, all the law did was show you what you were. But it could not make you better. It could make you a bit better. But he said it was good because it kept us for a time. But he said, but if you take hold of this new priesthood, this new order, you will find out.
change whatever he will in the life. And that's what the writer is trying to get the children, the Hebrews to see that Christ is better. You know the priests they had to go in, and they had to go in there and stay there. And you know some of them died before they got there. They went right.
desire to know the Lord. Amen. We open up the doors of the church to you. Something on.